So in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the six biggest issues with Modern Warfare, and then I'm also gonna talk about how to fix them. A lot of times people will rant and complain and all that type of stuff, but they don't actually offer any kind of solutions. So within this video, I'm gonna focus on six individual topics that I think are contributing to Modern Warfare not being as fun as it could potentially be. So feel free to leave your thoughts down in the comments section. A lot of people have been saying that the game's too campy, it sucks, or it's awesome. Let me know down in the comment section. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking. And if you'd like to see any of these six changes happen, make sure you leave a like. And if you're looking to find your way back to the channel for news or tips to improve a Call of Duty, make sure you do subscribe with notifications on. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is I feel like Modern Warfare got away from the bread and butter that makes Call of Duty. And what I'm talking about here is the 6v6 game mode for Team Deathmatch, Domination, Kill Confirm, Hardpoint and S and D. And even though I think it's great that we have the 2v2 gunfight, we have the 32v32 ground war, we have the 10v10 domination, headquarters, team deathmatch, all that variety within the game, you didn't take care of your core audience. And it definitely shows within the final product, whether they ran out of time because they were spending time on all these different various things. And at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter why. We're here already at launch. The game's been out for about four or five days. The issues have already started to arise. And I'd even mention that non 6v6 game mode that's also very popular in Call of Duty called Free For All. It's absolutely horrendous in this game. It's clear that no one play tested the map with the player counts because you can't even get to the 30 kill limit unless you just play reckless and almost go negative. And that brings me to the second big issue with the game and that is the overall map design because if you look at most of the maps, almost all of the maps seem to be designed for large player counts. And I'm not even talking 10v10. They'd have to up the player count to like 30, so it'd be 15 versus 15 because even with a 10v10, the maps still play considerably slow regardless if you're playing TDM, Domination, or Headquarters. And when it comes to the overall map design, there's pretty much three issues that are really contributing to this. So if they were able to change that, 10v10 could probably work. And those three big issues are spawns, sight lines from and to the spawns, as well as the different objective locations. So you guys have played the game. A lot of these spawns will put you very deep within the spawn, making it very hard to come out of the spawn because there's a lot of open lanes as you actually spawn in and you're trying to come out of spawn to move towards the middle of the map. And there's not a lot of cover. There's these open wide lanes, regardless of the map you're talking about, they're horribly designed in this way where someone can literally peek you, you take a couple steps out of spawn and you're likely to get shot. And at first that's not really a big issue because a lot of times that's going to happen. You're going to have one or two spawn deaths. You come out of spawn, someone just happened to be pre-aiming that area. But based off the movement in the game, this ends up leading that person just to sitting in the spawn because that's way safer than actually stepping out because the likelihood of you getting pre-aimed into one of those sight lines is so high that you're better off just sitting in your own spawn and not moving. So more often than not, even though you have entire map control, you're dominating the two flags and you push up and you're not really trying to push into enemy spawns, they literally just don't leave. They go ahead and sit back in their spawn, they mount on a wall and they pre-aim an area and they basically wait. And what ends up happening is I'm waiting for them and they're waiting for me and pretty much you end up with no movement on the map because the smart thing is not for me to go ahead and jump into their sight line and their smart move isn't to jump into my sight line, but those sight lines exist so you can't really avoid them and that is the big problem there. They gotta go ahead and move the spawns, kind of modify some of these sight lines on these maps, which is very possible. You can go ahead and put up little walls. You can board up some of the windows. There's a lot of different things you can do because the game is relatively easy. I could push up to a window, sight line into your spawn, mount up, I'm gonna have no recoil. Regardless of what weapon I'm using, I'm pretty much gonna be able to hit you coming out of spawn. So that's the way the game was designed and that is a lot slower and that is pretty boring. I'm gonna end up with like probably 25 kills in an entire dom match, maybe die two or three times. And then that's pretty much the match, kind of boring. I get the win, not much action. I don't even have to think because I don't even gotta leave a room and that that is designed intentionally to give the players certain power positions that are just really good. And I was able to demonstrate that in the video where I was able to break down the different power positions on Grazna Raid and I showed them off fairly well and I pretty much only had the one or two deaths from me just making mental mistakes. But for the most part, I was able to just camp up and get an 11 KD, 30 plus kills 
and not really have much risk. So tying that back in with the first statement I made about getting to the bread and butter, they need to make 6v6 fun. And the only way to do that is to cut off large portions of these maps. So then there would be 6v6 maps of the Grazna Raid. There'd be 10v10 maps of the Grazna Raid. And even though they're both Grazna Raid, they're going to be slightly different to account for the player count. Now let's go ahead and jump into another issue. And this is more of a confusing issue for the community. And that is the attachments that you should use on the specific weapons. This is pretty much one of the only times in Call of Duty history where attachments give you pluses and minuses but the descriptions are very vague, so it makes it very hard for a player, especially a casual player, to figure out which attachments are best for their particular weapon. Especially when you're talking about 50, 60, 70 attachments, it can get rather confusing and you don't have a lot of time to figure this out. And I'll give you a specific example. I was testing the various ranges for the Kilo Assault Rifle with the various attachments that say they're gonna go ahead and increase its damage range. All four of the attachments available just say plus one, to damage range which makes you think that they all increase the range by the exact same amount which ends up being completely false if you look at the monolithic suppressor it's going to increase your range by about two and a half meters if you go ahead and put on the lightweight suppressor you're going to go ahead and lose about seven and a half meters on your range the 16.6 .6 inch socom increases your range by about seven and a half meters and then if you go with the 19.8 socom it's going to go ahead and increase your range by about 15 meters which is more than double the 16.6 .6 SOCOM that has the similar description. And that's just one variable when talking about these specific attachments. A lot of these attachments actually have other pluses and minuses associated with them. And it can get very confusing when you're trying to figure out which set of attachments is the best for that particular weapon in a given circumstance. So even though I'm a fan of attachments having pluses and minuses, given the fact that you can equip five attachments to your primary and your secondary, I really think they need to expand on their descriptions and give you specific details like increases by 15 meters, reduces your aim down sight time by 10 milliseconds, increases your aim down sight time by 30 milliseconds. So at the end of the day, what I'm really asking for is just a little bit of transparency when it comes to attachments. And I think most of you would agree that would actually be a good thing for the game. And while we're on the topic of weapons, I think they need to adjust the headshot multiplier a little bit because right now it feels just a little bit too strong on a lot of the weapons. But maybe that's planned for a later balancing update, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. So now we'll move on to the fourth topic that I think the game really suffers from, and that is excessive camping because they really emphasize a camper playstyle because they want to make every style viable. And I can get behind that, but I think the big issue here is that camping has always been viable. You don't need to emphasize it. Camping has always been a thing. There are teams of people who are called the Camper Nation and they have camped on every single Call of Duty because it's very viable. Whether it was World War II, even Infinite Warfare, you had people camping. Modern Warfare 2, people were still camping then. So you don't need to emphasize that specific play style. And I think with four minor changes, they can drastically improve the pace of the game. The first one's pretty simple. All they really gotta do is go ahead and buff EOD a little bit because currently if you get hit with the claymore you're basically one shot which basically makes it so the camper has a significant advantage over the rusher i'm not saying the rusher shouldn't be penalized obviously you should be able to take some kind of damage but in the game's current state that engagement is not balanced at all it is a hundred percent weighted towards the camper and the second change i think could help with this is lowering the footstep audio currently it's so loud that literally even if you're crouch walking you can be heard from a significant distance and obviously the goal wouldn't be to get rid of the footsteps completely because obviously you still want to get punished for completely sprinting around the map if you're not able to react quick enough but you shouldn't be that punished where literally i can hear you if you're across the street and around the corner and i think that overall would encourage more people to just move because currently if you end up running or even just walking pretty quickly all you're telling the enemy team is here i am Come shoot me, pre-aim the doorway that I might be walking through within the next 15 seconds. And the next thing is making gunfire appear on the mini-map. Currently, you have a mini-map that doesn't really show anything other than your teammates. And then you have a 150 degree compass that is only helpful if you're looking in the direction you're being shot from. Otherwise, if they're behind you, you have no clue where that actual gunfire is coming from. 
So whereas in the past, if you fired your weapon, you knew you were going to show up on the mini map, you'd be encouraged to move from that location because you're basically giving away your exact location. But with it being significantly harder to narrow down that location, you have less of a reason to leave from that area, which is encouraging you to camp. And the fourth thing that is minor is I think you should be able to cycle non-lethal streaks. So if I want to use a personal radar, a UAV or a counter UAV, along with the advanced UAV, I should be able to run those streaks and loop them as much as I want. I shouldn't be punished for staying alive. And with the current system, that's exactly what it feels like. And that's gonna go ahead and transition us to the fifth thing, which is basically objective play is non-existent because everything is based off kill streaks instead of point streaks. I like how they did it in some of the previous Call of Duties where if you captured an objective, basically you'd get one additional point towards your streaks because how it works currently is, let's say I'm one kill off of my VTOL jet. There is literally no reason for me to jump on the objective because if I go ahead and camp and I get this last kill, it'll actually allow me to get the VTOL jet, which will help a lot with that map control and make it that much easier to regain that flag if we happen to lose it. But if there were a point system, I'd at least have a chance of actually getting that streak by simply just capturing the flag. And I think that change could also help improve some of the other things I talked about as far as the overall camping and getting back to that bread and butter because people just do not play the modes because of the poor map design. There's a lot of variables that are kind of tying in together. And that's gonna bring us to the sixth thing, which is basically skill-based matchmaking. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's basically the game's attempt to put you with like-skilled players. And that's not something that I think ever has a place within the public matchmaking. The same would go for if I was playing basketball and I went to the park, I'd expect everyone on the team to have random skill if we were just playing randomly. But if I went to a rec league and I joined a team, I would expect everyone to have a similar skill level because that's what I'm after. I'm going after that competition. So eventually at some point, Call of Duty Modern Warfare will hopefully add a ranked playlist. Until then, if I wanna go against like skilled players, then I'll just go ahead and play GBs for money. So when I click public matchmaking, I should be able to have a casual experience. Meaning that there's some people that got the game the first day. There's some people that have been playing Call of Duty since COD 4. There's some people that are objective players. There's some people that are really good at the game. There's some people that are pretty horrible at the game, but they still enjoy it. I should have a matchmaking experience that is completely random. Keep in mind that this is not a complaining video. I want the game to be as good as it can possibly be. And that's why I offer suggestions for each of the issues. So let me know down in the comment section, what do you think is holding this game back and how would you solve that particular problem? If you enjoyed the video in any way or found it helpful, regardless if you agreed with everything I had to say, please do me a favor, hit that like button. And if you're looking to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, remember to hit that red subscribe button, turning it to gray with notifications on by ringing that bell. Do appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.